I'm going to show you how to do a linear regression in Microsoft Excel using the Analysis Tool Pack. The data that I'm using is available for you to download. If you go to the description down below, you can find the download link there. So you can go ahead and get the data and you can follow along as I do the example. After I do the linear regression, I'll go over some troubleshooting tips for those of you that may be having difficulty. And then also please note that the results are on the second tab here. So if you want to click over and check the results after you run your linear regression, you can check to make sure that you did it correctly. So the data that we have here is dealing with pre-pregnancy weight of mothers in pounds and birth weight of infants in grams. And what we want to check is if there's a relationship between the pre-pregnancy weight of the mother and the birth weight of the infant. We could do a correlation, and that would tell us the relationship, but a linear regression will go one step further. It'll also let us make predictions. So given a certain weight for the mother, we could predict what the outcome would be for the infant, what the result would be for birth weight. So to work with the tool pack, we're going to go to the data tab. And I'm going to click this data analysis button here. If you don't have this, then you need to go ahead and download the tool pack first. I have a video on how to install the tool pack. So go ahead and check that out and then come back here when you've got it all ready to go. So here we're going to click on data analysis. And that's going to bring up this dialog box. And from here, I'm going to check regression. And then I'm going to click OK. And this brings up the box where I can input my parameters. And what you need to note here is that this is a little bit backwards of how we would typically input our data based on how it's set up in our spreadsheet. So for linear regression, our x variable is going to be our variable that we're using to predict with, so our independent variable. And our y variable is going to be the variable that we're trying to predict. So that's going to be our dependent variable. I like to think of these as explanatory and response variables. We're trying to use our x variable or our explanatory variable to see if it can explain what we're seeing with birth weight. So explanatory and response variable. So the variable that we're trying to use to predict with goes in this X range. And in this case, that's the pre-pregnancy weight of the mother. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna select this data. And then the variable that I'm trying to predict is the birth weight of the infant. If you think of that backwards, it wouldn't really make any sense to try to predict the mother's pre-pregnancy weight based on infant birth weight. So conceptually, it makes more sense that I'm trying to predict infant birth weight. So whatever data you're using, think of it in those terms. What are you using to predict? And which variable are you actually trying to predict? So think about explanatory and response variables. Now, because I selected the text up here for my labels, I'm going to check this box. I recommend that you select your labels. It'll make the interpretation a little bit easier. If it's not working, though, go ahead and unselect the labels and then uncheck that box. So the other thing we need to change is our output. I'd like my output to be just right here next to my chart. And for just regular linear regression, I don't need to check any of the rest of these. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that's going to give me my linear regression. I'm going to widen these a little bit just to make them a little easier to read. And I've got some summary information here. This value right here is my correlation. They call it my multiple R. And then here is my R squared. This is my correlation squared, also called my variance. So let me just put that in there for you. That's my R squared. I call that variance. And this is my value for my correlation. Okay, I don't need to pay attention to these right now, but I do note that I have 22 observations. And then for linear regression, I can just ignore the results for the ANOVA. You might use that in some cases, but for what we're interested in right now, that's not going to be relevant for us. I want to be able to see these a little bit more. Okay, so down here is my linear regression output, and here it gives me my information on my intercept and on my pre-pregnancy weight. Now this is where it's helpful to have selected the labels because it'll put that value right in here or the variable name in here. 
So pre-pregnancy weight is what I'm trying to look at to see if there's a relationship to birth weight. So the way that I'm gonna read this output, this is gonna be the value that's equal to my intercept. And this is gonna be the value that's equal to my slope. So intercept is the value for your intercept. And then it'll say slope if you didn't select labels, or if you select labels, your variable name is gonna be the value for the slope of your line. I'll show you how to build the regression equation in just a minute. The other thing that we're gonna to wanna to look at in our regression output is at whether or not this is a statistically significant result. So to determine whether or not this is a statistically significant result, I'm gonna look at my p-value. And here I have two p-values. I have one for my intercept and one for my slope. What I'm trying to test is whether or not there is a positive linear relationship. I'm not trying to test where it crosses the y-axis, which is my intercept. So I'm not gonna look at the p-value for my intercept. I'm gonna look at the p-value for slope, or I'm gonna look at it for the pre-pregnancy weight if I've selected my variable name. So this is a p-value that I wanna look at to determine whether or not this is a significant result. And this is a 1.77665 to the negative 0 0.0, to the negative 0 0.05. So this is a very small number less than zero. So there's gonna be uh, four zeros in front of this if I move that decimal point over. So there's gonna be a bunch of zeros here. So this is a very small number. It's just written kind of weird. Normally we would see this written as a superscript text with the little e to the negative five uh, kind of up above the last number there. So this is much, much smaller than 0 0.05. So if you don't have a level of significance that's been given to you in your problem, we're gonna just, we're gonna uh, assume that we have a level of significance of 0 0.05. So I'm gonna compare my significance level to my p-value. And my p-value is gonna be, so I'm just gonna round that off a little bit. So this is a much smaller number. So my 0 0.05 is higher. And that means that this is gonna be significant. I'm looking for a low p-value to be a significant result. So this is statistically significant. And let's go ahead and interpret this. So I'm gonna interpret it using my slope. And my interpretation is, for every one unit increase in pre-pregnancy weight, there's a corresponding 12.48 increase, gram increase in birth weight of the infant. So this is how we would interpret our linear regression. For every one unit increase in our independent variable, there is a corresponding insert your value for your slope, either increase or reduction in your dependent variable. So this is your template you can use and just plug in whatever information you're looking at into that template. So let's see how it would apply to this problem. So here, for every one pound increase in pre-pregnancy weight, there's a corresponding 12.48 gram increase in infant birth weight. Now, I know this is increased because it's a positive number. If my coefficient here was a negative number, then I would say that this is a decrease or a reduction in my dependent variable. Okay, so this is how we're gonna interpret linear regression. So whatever you're doing, you can plug your information into this little template here. And that's how you would interpret it. So every additional pound of pre-pregnancy weight means that there is a corresponding 12.48 gram increase in your infant birth weight. All right, let's build our regression equation. So to build our regression equation, we need to know our slope, which we have here, it's this value, and we need to have our intercept, which is this value. So this is our formula for slope. It's going to be predicted value of y, is going to be equal to our intercept plus our slope times x value. So in this situation, if we want to build our regression equation, it's going to look like this. It's going to be predicted value of y is going to be equal to, remember this is going to be our intercept value, so 2, 4, 2, 8, 9, 7, 9, 1. We want to leave at least four digits here until we get to the end so we don't have any rounding errors. And then this is going to be my slope value, which is 12.4847. I went ahead and rounded that to leave it at four digits. 
So now if I insert any value in here for x, I can get a predicted value for what the birth weight will be. So let's see how this would work out. So if I wanted to pick a pre-pregnancy weight, let's say 150 pounds, I can plug that in and I can find what the predicted birth weight would be for that pre-pregnancy weight. So I want to know what the predicted infant birth weight would be for 150 pounds. So I've gone ahead and plugged that in here and I just need to solve this to figure out the predicted value for the birth weight of the infant in grams. And remember these are grams for birth weight and it's pounds for the pre-pregnancy weight. So that's why this number looks so large here. And then just remember your order of operations. We need to make sure that we multiply these two before we add them. If you just work straight across, you're gonna get a number that doesn't make any sense in the context of uh, birth weight that we're looking at. So let's go ahead and solve that and find out what the predicted birth weight is for a mother who is 150 pounds before pregnancy. Okay, so if we solve this, we see that the predicted birth weight for an infant whose mother weighed 150 pounds before pregnancy would be 4,301.68 grams. Now this data is based off of mothers with diabetes in pregnancy. So these birth weights are a little higher than average. 4,500 grams is about nine pounds. So these are larger than average birth weights. So if the numbers seem a little high to you, that is why. So this is how we would find our regression equation and also how we would plug a number in to get a value. Now, if you're having difficulty running the linear regression, I'm going to give you a few troubleshooting tips. So the first thing that you want to look at if you're not getting the correct answer or something's just not making sense is number of observations. So come up here and check your number of observations. I have 22. Now go back to your data and make sure that you should have 22. I have text in my first row, so I should have 22 observations. So that matches up because maybe you just didn't select all the way down when you were selecting your data, and we could have made an error that way. So that's one thing to check. The other thing to check is that in the tool pack, only check this labels box if you've actually selected labels. Otherwise, it's going to tell me that I have non-numeric data in the, in the data range, and it's not gonna work properly. So make sure that this matches up. I only have selected this if my labels are actually part of the data range that I selected. So those are the two main things for running the regression. If you're not getting the correct answer when you're trying to do the equation, make sure that you're multiplying this part of it first. Okay, I'm gonna put these parentheses here. If I just worked straight across here, instead of 4,300 grams, I would get some ridiculous number because I would take 2,428, add 12 to it, and then I would be multiplying that times 150. So it would be an, just an absurd number for an infant birth weight. So think about if your number makes sense conceptually and make sure that you are multiplying this before you're adding it. If you're having any other problems with the, running the regression and using the data, go ahead and post a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out with that. If this video helped you out, please go ahead and give it a like and check out my other videos where I show you how to use the data analysis tool pack features. You can find links for those in the description below.